Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. Now, once again, it's time to keep that weekly appointment with our good friend and host, Dr. Watson. Good evening, Dr. Watson. Good evening, Mr. Bell. As usual, you're punctual to the minute. Draw up your chair and make yourself comfortable. Thank you. That's it. I see that you have the old black tin dispatch box out again, Dr. Watson. I deduce that you were going over your notes on tonight's case. Elementary, my dear boy. And <laughs> among the records, I came across some notes of cases that I'd almost forgotten. The shocking death of Crosby, the banker, the Adelton tragedy, and some data on the unusual contents of the ancient British barrow. Those stories sound pretty intriguing, Dr. Watson. I shall tell them to you some other evening, Mr. Bell. Tonight, I'm going to recount an adventure that took place in the heart of the beautiful English countryside. I call it The Adventure of the Tolling Bell. Well, that story began in the small country village of Carnforth. Holmes had recently brought to a successful conclusion the affair of the Barrow and Furnace wheelchair murders. And we decided that a few days rest in nearby Carnforth would do us both good before returning to our arduous life in Baker Street. We were staying at a small but comfortable inn. Early on the morning of the third day, I remember, Holmes and I were in our bedroom waiting for those two essentials without which an English country gentleman could not start his day. The early morning cup of tea and a jug of hot water for shaving. As we sat there at the open window, a nearby church bell was tolling a funeral knell. There must be a funeral in the village, Holmes. An astonishing deduction, Watson. There's no need to make fun of me. Pressing sound, isn't it? I suppose so. Has it ever occurred to you, Watson, that the history of bells is full of romantic interest? Well, I can't say that I've thought much about it. Almost every historical event has been accompanied by the sound of bells. They summoned soldiers to arms as well as Christians to church. They sounded the alarm in fire, tumult, and invasion. And many a bloody chapter in history has been rung in and out by bells. You seem to be a mine of information on the subject. Yes, Watson. It's a fascinating subject. Come in, come in. Good morning, my dear. Morning, gentlemen. I brought you tea and your shaving water. Mrs. Mickle said to say your breakfast will be ready in half an hour. Splendid, Mary. Oh, uh, Mary, the church bell is tolling a funeral knell. Do you know who's being buried? That I do, sir. I wish it was me. It'll be my turn soon. Poor little thing. I wonder what's the matter with her. I have no idea. Perhaps her father or mother just died. Or a young man. Yes, I bet that's it. She's a pretty girl. And she'd obviously have been crying when she came in. Perhaps that's her fiancé they're burying now. Now, Watson, you have the sentimental imagination of the true storyteller. But we've come here for a holiday. You must give your imagination a rest, too. So drink your tea, remove your whiskers, and we'll go downstairs and investigate those kippers. You like your kippers, gentlemen? Excellent, Mrs. Mickle, excellent. Never eaten better. Yes, indeed. By the way, Mrs. Mickle, we heard the funeral bell tolling earlier on. Do you know who was being buried? Yes, I do. Two souls are being buried, and one of them was a murderer. A murderer? Good Lord, in this peaceful village? What happened, Mrs. Mickle? It's where old Threadgold, the corn merchant, found out his wife had been gallivanting around with a young fellow from Bolton. Put her throat, he did, and anonged himself. More tea. Thank you. Shocking. So the peaceful countryside is not as peaceful as it's made out to be, Holmes. A fact that I've frequently had occasion to point out to you, Watson... Has the morning post arrived yet, Mrs. Mickle? Here comes old Gilly up the path with it now. I'll see if he's got anything for you. Murder? What do you make of it, Holmes? What is there to make of it, Watson? A jealous husband murders a faithless wife and then commits suicide. A tragic story, but uh, a simple one. Top of the morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning, Gilly. Any letters for me today? Oh, Mr. Holmes, two letters. One of them's got some newspaper clippings in it, I think. And you've got a postcard from a Mr. Lestrade. He wants you back in London bad, Mr. Holmes. There you are. Oh, upon my soul, Gilly, you've been reading Mr. Holmes' private correspondence. Just bless your heart, Dr. Watson. If I didn't read other people's correspondence, how would I know what's going on in the village? Mm, you were right, Gilly. It is newspaper clippings. 
By the way, you heard about the murder of Mrs. Treadgold, I suppose? Heard about it. I told the bell this morning at the funeral. You mean to say that you're the bell ringer as well as the postman? Bless your heart, yes, Doctor. President of the Coral Society, too, as well as being on the Paris Council. You're a busy man, Gillian. That I am, sir. Take this afternoon now. I'm to ring those bells again. Okay? Not another funeral, surely? Uh, no, sir. A wedding this time. Oh, I'm going to hear it. Young Sam Perrin is marrying the Slater girl. And you might say I'm responsible for bringing them together. Got some of their letters mixed up, I did. They looked each other up to exchange them, and I pressed them. Before you know what's happening, they're getting married. <laughs> Regular Cupid, you might say I am. Be off with you, Gilly. Other people want their letters. Mr. Holmes doesn't want his kippers spoiled with your idle chatter. All right, Mrs. Crabapples and Vinegar. Uh, one of these fine days, you'll smile. And the world will come to an end. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, good day, good day. Talkative old busybody he is. Oh, Mr. Holmes. Mrs. Lachlan's in the hall. The poor old lady's most anxious to talk to you. Mrs. Lachlan? She has the sempstress shop in the I Street. Her only son and on her way from home a few months back. I think that's what she wants to speak to you about. Oh, but uh, my friend's here for a rest, Mrs. Mickle. I told her that, Doctor, but she won't go away without seeing Mr. Holmes. Oh, very well. Ask her to come in, please, Mrs. Mickle. Yes, Mr. Holmes. Oh, why do you bother to see her, Holmes? Sounds like a trivial matter. The disappearance of an only son can never be a trivial matter. Well, I meant trivial for you, not for her. This is Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, dear. Thank you, Amy. Good morning, Seth. Good morning. Good morning. Please sit down, Mrs. Lackland. That's it. Now, what's the trouble? It's Tom, sir. My only son. He left me four months ago, and I've not seen any or right of him since. You've had no message from him since he left? Not one word, I'm fed out of my mind, sir. Have you any idea of his reason for leaving the village, Mrs. Lackland? None, sir. He was a good boy, and he worked hard, and he didn't fool around with those flippity gibbet girls in the village. I think he's met with foul ply, gentlemen. And I want you to find out about him for me, Mr. Holmes. I've heard say in the village that you're the greatest detective in England. Uh, Mrs. Lackland, I'd be glad to help you, but uh, you give me no clues to work with. I'm afraid if that I can... If it's money you want, I've got 20 pounds in my post of savings. It's all yours if you can bring my Tommy home to me. But at least tell me he's safe. Mrs. Lackland, I wouldn't dream of accepting a fee. However, I shall give your problem some thought. If I arrive at any conclusions, I'll get in touch with you at once. God bless you, Mr. Holmes. Good morning to you, sir. A good day. Good morning, Mr. Lackland. Poor old thing. I don't see how you can help her, Holmes. Nor do I, at the moment. But a young man who has grown up in a small village like this may have led a life that his mother is totally unaware of. You said that you had to work on one of your stories today, Watson. Yes, I had a letter from the editor of the Strand magazine yesterday, requesting a manuscript as soon as possible. Splendid. Then you stay at the inn and work on your latest masterpiece while I scour the village to see what may be found out about the missing young man. <laughs> Beginning to think you got lost. Hello, Watson. I trust you had a profitable session with pen and paper. Well, I've done about half a chapter. I would have done more if it hadn't been for those infernal bells. Mm, the wedding ceremony that the worthy Gilly told us about this morning. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, well, what did you find out about Mrs. Lackland's son? Among other things, that he had a secret love life unknown to his mother. And the object of his affections was none other than the maid who brought us our tea this morning. Mary? Have you talked to her? No, it's her half day off, and I was unable to find her. However, I shall question her when she brings our tea tomorrow morning. Come in, Mary. Oh, Mrs. Mickle. Good morning, gentlemen. Here's your tea and shaving water. Where's Mary this morning? She didn't come to work. Must be ill again. Unreliable girl. I'm no better than she ought to be, if you ask me. It's no job for me to be carrying tea and hot water upstairs. I hear the village bell tolling for another funeral. 
Does Carnforth have a burial every morning? I really don't see how the population can run to it. It's another suicide, sir. Another suicide? Good Lord. Old John Larrabee, the baker. He was expecting some money from his son in Australia. It never came. And they foreclosed on his shop. And he hanged himself. Will you be wanting a couple of boiled eggs to your breakfast, gentlemen? No, no, I haven't much of an appetite, thank you very much. Yes, sir. That woman seems absolutely heartless. She almost smacks her lips when she tells us about these tragedies. Yes, Watson, I noticed it. This peaceful village is beginning to seem strangely sinister to me. And since you have no appetite for breakfast, perhaps you'll join me in a little excursion as soon as you're dressed. Of course. Where are we going? To see the maid, Mary. I'm anxious to talk to her before another funeral bell begins to toll. <laughs> This must be the cottage, Holmes. They said it was the one with honeysuckle over the gate. Yes, and there's Mary sitting on the porch. Oh, she's got up. She's coming. She's coming up the path to meet us. Good morning, Mary. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, why have you come here? Not to ask about my health. Why should a servant girl matter to gentlemen like you? Oh, you must judge us, my dear. I assure you that No, we... Watson. Let's be honest and admit we didn't come here because of our concern for Mary's health. Then why did you come here, sir? Mrs. Lackland asked me to try and find her son, Tom. Tom? Yes, Tom Lackland. I thought you might be able to help me, Mary. If I could help you, Mr. Holmes, I'd be helping myself, too. Here come Gilly, the postman. Gilly? Gilly, is there a letter for me to die? No, lass. There's nothing for you again. There must be, Gilly. There must be there. No, lass. If the letter would come, I'd bring it to you as fast as my legs would carry me. You know that. Oh. Morning, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson. Left some letters at the inn for you, Doctor. You had a letter from a lady. Oh, uh, how do you know it was from a lady? Uh, reeked with the smell of violets, it did. And it was written in green ink on grey paper, sir. Amazing deduction. That sounds like your young friend from Daly's, Watson. Oh, how did you know that? Well, I mean, I don't have a young friend from Daly's, Watson. Quite. Gilly. You told another funeral bell today, didn't you? Aye, sir. And a tragic thing it was. Fate, you might call it. Old Larrabee hanged himself because he didn't get money from his son in Australia. I found him, I did. I was the one to cut him down. And right in the post bag was the letter he was waiting for. The letter that had saved his life. Great Scott, what a ghastly piece of irony. That it was, sir. That it was. Well, gentlemen, I'll be on my way. Good day. Good day, Mary. Perhaps that letter will arrive tomorrow. No. I'll never hear from Tom, never. He's ashamed of me. That's why he deserted me. Deserted you, Mary? You speak almost as if you were his wife. I am his wife. What? We were married secretly in Rochdale five months ago, come Tuesday. And he never told his mother? He was afraid to. She thought I was beneath him. Tom said he'd go away and get a good job and then return here and fetch me back with him. He went away all right. But he never came back and sent me word. Uh, when he left, uh, did he give no clues to his destination? No hint of any kind, Mary? Well, he did want to say, Mary, I'm going to clear out to this puddle and make my fortune. Even if I have to bury it. And then he said, bury me fortune. <laughs> That's a joke, isn't it? But I don't know what he meant by I think I do, Mary. Watson, we're taking a short train journey as soon as possible. Oh, where are we going, may I ask? We're going to the town of Bury in search of this young lady's husband. What makes you think Tom might be in Bury, Mr. Holmes? Because the famous fortune cotton mills are in Bury. It would seem possible that when your husband joked of burying his fortune... He was talking of going to the mills there. Wherever he's gone, he won't be coming back for me. I know that. No, 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 no. Don't talk like that, my dear. Remember, you have friends. Mrs. Lackland. <laughs> Holmes going to be 
Leaves me standing outside the factory gates if I were a blasted coach. Oh, there he is. There he is. Home. Home. Hello. Hello, Watson. Permit me to introduce you to Mr. Tom Lackland. Tom, this is Dr. Watson. How do you do, Dr. Watson? How do you do? Never mind how I do, young fellow, my lad. How do you do? Your behavior's been absolutely shocking. Shocking. Now, what are you talking Leaving about? Leaving your dear old mother and deserting your pretty little bride because you're ashamed of her. But you're a I... scoundrel, sir. You deserve a good horse whipping, and I have a good mind to give it to you. I don't know what you're talking about, Dr. Watson, but I don't like the words you use. And if it's violence you want, I don't mind telling you I'm amateur heavyweight champion of the county. You are? Oh, oh, no need to come aggressive. What? No, let's waste time on being acrimonious, Watson. Let's get back to the station as fast as we can. The return of the prodigal is long overdue. We must give them every opportunity to kill the fatted calf. <laughs> Hi, there's Mary's house. I'm dying to see her. And after this reunion, Tom, I suggest that you both go over and see your mother. I'm sure she'll forgive you. Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes, I'll do that. Well, perhaps we should have warned her. Your sudden appearance may be something of a shock. I think it's a shock that Mary can handle. She must be out. Door's locked. Knock again. If you don't mind, she, she may be asleep. Great heavens! That was a revolver shot. Come on, Watson. Help me break in the door. Now, Dr. Watson, that was a fine place to break off your story. You left me right on the edge of a cliff. Had the young girl shot herself? She'd shot at herself, Mr. Bell. But fortunately, a last-minute lack of courage had made her shot go wild. Holmes and I and the young bridegroom burst into the house and wrested the smoking revolver from her hand. I must confess that the union between the two young lovers was a touching sight. In fact, I felt considerably older than I was as Holmes and I stood there listening to, uh, to Tom reassuring her. Mary, darling, oh. it's all right. I'm here. Oh, Tom, you are. You did come back for me. I thought you never would. I tried to kill myself. But I haven't the courage. Oh, there, there, Mary. Everything's going to be all right now. It will be, Tom, won't it? I'm so tired. And now, Tom, I think the time has come to reassure Mary that you did write to her. Oh, of course I did, Mary, darling. And I sent you money and told you that I'd be back here to take you to Ferry as soon as I'd saved up enough. You wrote to me, Tom? Well, twice a week. When I wrote to Mother, too. Then why didn't I get the letters? The answer to that should be obvious, my dear. Gilly, the postman, deliberately withheld them from you. Gilly? Great heavens. Why? I have my suspicions. Strong suspicions. But I have to get proof. Tell me, Mary, the day before yesterday, Mr. Treadgold murdered his wife. Do you know how he learned of her infidelity? Well, I'm not sure, but... Oh, did hear Mrs. Nichols say that it was through some letters that got mixed up. The letters addressed to her were delivered to his office instead of at the house. Gilly again. Precisely. Surely the whole terrible pattern begins to take shape. Tom. Yes, Mr. Holmes? I'm going to lay a trap. To spring it, I shall need your assistance. Of course, Mr. Holmes. I'll do anything. Wait here with Mary until darkness falls. Then muffle yourselves up and go to your mother's house. Wait there in hiding and let no outsider see you until you hear from me. Uh, since you two love birds have been separated for four months, I don't imagine that'll be too unpleasant. Quiet, Watson. You understand, Tom? Yes, Mr. Holmes. Good. Then come on, Watson. Well, what's your plan, Holmes? I'll tell you as we go. One thing I can promise you. Before the sun is very high tomorrow, I shall free this village from one of the most subtly evil powers I've ever come in contact with. Good morning, Dr. Watson. Rose. Good morning, Mrs. Mickle. Good morning. I always said that Mary was a no-good girl, and now she's killed herself. But of course, I had to come to her funeral. It's very chargeable, Mrs. Mickle, I must say. In any case, the vicar says that the poor girl was of unsound mind. Yes, madam, you can't blame her. Well, I'll be getting into the church. Holmes, this farce is beginning to get on my nerves. What are we accomplishing by burying an empty coffin? You'll soon see, old chap. Come on. Let's slip into the vestry. 
This way. Oh, where are we going, Holmes? Up the stairs that lead to the belfry. Here they are. Well, supposing Gilly turns nasty when he finds out we know his secret. Then we must handle him to the best of our ability, Watson. Well, I must say I do not relish the thought of a tussle high in the belfry of a church. The man must be insane. Obviously. That's why his power must be destroyed. This door apparently leads to the belfry. Keep your wits about you, Watson. Good morning, Gilly. Uh, Mr. Holmes! Dr. Watson! You come to see me at work! That's nice of you! Not often I get company up here! We haven't come up here to see you at work, Gilly. We know your diabolical work only too well. Yes, Gilly, we know your secret. What secret's that? You're mad with power, Gilly. You've tried to control the destiny of this village. In your position as postman, you you have the power to give life and death. That I am, sir. And it's a great power. It makes a man feel good. Almost like a god, you might say. That's sacrilege, you scoundrel. You were responsible for the murder of Mrs. Treadgold. Aye, sir, that I was. And for the old man hanging himself. You were responsible for John Larrabee's suicide, weren't you? Aye, that I was. Let a big fight to vote me off the village council. I swore I'd make him pay for it, and I did. Your reign is over, Gilly. You'll never toll a bell again. The only one you'll hear will be a prison bell. You can't touch me, Mr. Holmes. You've got no proof. There's nothing you can do. Don't be too sure. I've enough influence to take your job away. You... You... Take me away from me, Bells. I... I live for these Bells. You wouldn't take me away from them. You couldn't live without the power they give you, could you, Gilly? You're trying to destroy me! You are destroyed, Gilly. Yes, you've already failed. Mary's alive. Uh, alive? But the coffin they're burying down there... It is full of stones. You'll be the laughing stock of the village, Gilly. They'll never laugh at Gilly. You can't catch me, Mr. Holmes. I'm beyond your still. He's running up the ladder leading to the bell car. Come back, Gilly. Come back. He's, he's mad as a hatter. Quite. Well, what's he going to do up there? He might set fire to the steeple. Could be any madness. I'm going to fetch him, Holmes. No, Watson. He drew a knife as he fled. And with that rickety staircase and the narrow opening leading into the bell chamber, you'd never stand a chance. He'd get you on the first slash. How are we going to get him down? There's only one way. He's in a tiny loft containing his beloved bells. We'll see how much he loves them at close quarters. I doubt if even he can stand the noise in that confined space. Where's that bell rope? Come down, Gilly. Come down from there. Stop! Stop ringing the bell! Not until you come down, Gilly. Stop ringing them! I can't stand it! You're driving me mad! You are mad, Gilly. Mad with power. Come down here, I say. I'm coming! Great heavens, he hurled himself out of the belfry. Holmes, he hasn't a chance of surviving that fall. I have no intention of causing the unhappy man to jump to his death, Watson. Though I cannot help but feel that his poor demented mind may find a happy oblivion this way rather than in the confines of an asylum. Yes, you're probably right, Holmes. It's been a shocking case, Watson, shocking. And once again it proves the old saying that violence does in truth recoil upon the violent. And the schemer falls into the pit which he digs for another. Now, Dr. Watson, what about next week? Well, now, let me see what's left in here. Um, next week... I think I'll tell you a rather gruesome story about how Sherlock Holmes saved the life and the sanity of a certain Count Romagni. I call it The Adventure of the Carpathian Horror. Tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure was suggested by an incident in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Golden Pants Nay. Nigel Bruce appeared through the courtesy of California Pictures. Tom Conway, by permission of Eagle Lion Pictures. The Sherlock Holmes series is produced by Tom McKnight with original music composed and conducted by Alex Steiner. This is Joseph Bell and inviting you to be with us next week at this same time when Dr. Watson will tell us the adventure of the Carpathian Horror. <laughs>